Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I'm going to be filming my review on the Dose of Colors Desi X Katie Friendcation Collection. I know my review on this is going pretty late. This collection did launch a little while ago, but as you guys know, I was in Japan for two weeks and I didn't have time to film this before I left. I filmed the Disney collection instead before I left. So here I am now reviewing it for you guys, so I hope it's not too late. There are a lot of things that we need to cover in this collection. I didn't pick up everything but I'll explain what I did pick up and what I didn't. But yeah, if you guys are interested in hearing my thoughts on this collection, seeing three looks with the palette and seeing swatches of the lip colors and everything like that you need to know, then just continue watching. Okay, first things first is of course product info. There are a lot of new additions to the Daisy XKD Dose of Colors family now. Like I said in the intro, I didn't pick up everything, so I'll tell you what is actually in this collection. First, of course, is the Friendcation palette. I think this collection is hands down my favorite packaging, period. I just love how just glam and pretty and luxe this looks. This is 55 US dollars. You get 10 shadows and a little mirror here as well. They also did launch a new highlight and they also came back with Fuego. So I got Fuego with the first launch from last year and this is $28. I didn't pick up the new highlighter just because I know that highlighter would be too dark for me. They also came back with over the top gloss and they came out with a new gloss which I I personally didn't pick up because just knowing my preference, I probably wouldn't like that gloss as much. It probably wouldn't be like my holy grail gloss. Um, but I do love over the top and this is 17 US dollars. They came out with a new formula of the Velvet Liquilips and they came out with, I believe, two shades. I only got one. I got the shade My Main and this is 18 US dollars. And then they also came out with lipsticks and I only got one out of the bunch that I liked, which is Hey Girl. And this is 16 US dollars. A bit of comparisons from the first launch to the second launch. The packaging is a little bit different. You can see the Frankation palette to Fuego from last year. It's a lot darker and the packaging last year is a little bit more brighter and more gold. Also in the package like you will get their little pamphlet which is really cute. It's like a little postcard like Frankation I think. Just the whole collection really comes together. And you also do get stickers which is cool as well and I saw that with Karen's collab with Dose of Colors you also get stickers as well. Okay so first things first let's talk about the eyeshadow palette because I feel like eyeshadow palettes are always the most exciting things when it comes to collections. So this again is the Frankation palette. You get 10 shadows in here for 55 US dollars. I've been really back and forth with this palette. I did bring this palette with me to Japan to try out for two weeks. This was the only palette that I used in Japan. It was really 50-50 like some days I loved it. Some days I just like is it worth it? Like oh I don't know. So here is kind of my thought process to get to my conclusion. In Japan I only use the matte shades. So there are five mattes and five shimmers so you get a half and half. Using the mattes Honestly, they weren't my favorite. I would much prefer ColourPop mattes a lot more. I don't know, maybe it's just the shadow, especially Necessary, the transition shade. I had the most hard time with. I just felt like some days it would blend out so seamlessly, so beautiful, but some other days it was a little bit patchy. So I'm like, I can't gather my thoughts because every day it's a little bit different. I don't know if it's my eyes, I was traveling, what it was, but that was my situation. They were pigmented, but I just found like they were a little bit harder to blend out. And the thing with these form with the matte formula is that they don't have much fallout at all. If you just dip into it, there's a little bit of kick kickback in the palette, but once you just tap it off and you work on it on your eyes, there is no fallout whatsoever. Even with like the darkest shade, you will get no fallout on your face with the mattes. So I think maybe that might have something to do with it blending out not as well for me. Maybe it's just me and my technique. Then when I got home and I was filming this video for you guys, I was playing around with the shimmers. So with the shimmers, uh, honestly, they are just so stunning. They are, This palette is just so different to me and something that I personally haven't used before. So these shimmer shadows are very unique and just very special. With these, if you are going to use them, I would highly recommend that you do your eyes first because you will no matter what have fallout. There is just so many fine glitters in these eyeshadows. It's so pretty and magical. Yesterday, I filmed demo two and I wore a moment and game over on my eyes. Every person that I encountered, like when I was paying for something, complimented me on my makeup and especially they complimented me on my eyes. 
They didn't say like, oh, what foundation are you wearing? What's your highlight? They were complimenting my eyeshadow and I was like, oh, because before I left yesterday, I was like, okay, I got my thoughts. I'm going to tell them like, this palette's not worth it for 55 US dollars. That's like 70 bucks in New Zealand for 10 shadows. That was my thought. And I'm like, okay, I got my video down for tomorrow. That's what I'm going to tell you guys. But after I went out and I got, I received so many compliments on my eyeshadow. I'm like, maybe it is worth it. Maybe it is something very, very special, you know, because I've never received that many compliments in one day in person on my eyeshadow. So that kind of changed my opinion on it. Maybe it is something very special. And I know the shimmer shadows are very special but it's just so incredibly pricey that I can't sit here and tell you guys what you can spend your money on like I don't know what you already have in your collection and your current financial situation so I can't really come to a conclusion where I highly highly recommend it to you guys so it's really up to you and what you take from what I'm saying and you judge it on your own although this palette is 55 US dollars the packaging is not cheap, you know what I mean? Their service is not bad at all, like Dose of Colors. I remember last year when my highlighter, it took a really long time to come. They sent me a free lipstick because of the time that I was waiting. So the service is great, the packaging is great. You know, Daisy and Katie are really cool, down-to-earth people. So I think with that, um, just depending on you and how much money you want to spend on makeup, I'm just going to just conclude it at that. I do like these shimmers. The mattes are just okay for me. Um, I definitely will be picking up this palette again. I just think the shimmers are something very special, very unique, and something that I haven't played around with before in an eyeshadow. They are almost like glitters. Now moving on to the next product which is the highlighter. I'm just gonna quickly run over this because you guys know that this is like literally my holy grail highlighter. I stopped using it for a little while like I only used it off camera because I knew that this was limited edition. It was out of stock. You guys couldn't buy it. I don't want to use things in my videos that you guys can't buy. Fuego is my favorite highlighter period and it just looks so good on the skin. The formula is amazing. You can just dab it once, put it on your skin and it's a very light wash of a highlight. It's not too much much in your face but then you can really build it up to get a very striking highlight and I just love this formula there is no chunky glitters it's very smooth very wet looking highly highly recommend the highlighters the next item I want to quickly run over is the gloss because I have already used this before and you can see that I've used this quite heavily in the past I didn't want to use it too often because again I knew it was limited edition but it is a really really beautiful gloss and it smells so freaking good it's like a clear gloss with a lot of very very fine gold glitters in there and in the sun it looks so juicy it makes your lips look so good you can feel the glitters a little bit like the tiniest like if you rub your lips together but it's nothing that really bothers me so I really do like over the top gloss and obviously it is a bestseller that's why they bring it back like over the top and fuego uh, these are the two items that I actually use from last year's launch everything else I don't use too often but these two things are the things that I actually keep in my top drawer and use over and over over again so obviously these two are the best sellers that's why they came back with it in this collection so I can see why they did so now we're gonna move on to the liquid lipstick so this is in their velvet formula and I believe it's like a new formula it's the lip color that I'm wearing right now and I got the shade in my main and this also has a smell as well it smells like the lip gloss I was trying to find dupes for the liquid lipstick and the lipstick but I couldn't find anything that came similar to it. I feel like the lipstick maybe some of the shades were a little bit similar but definitely for the liquid lipstick I couldn't I don't have anything like this in my collection. As you guys know I'm not like the biggest fan when it comes to liquid lipsticks and matte lipsticks. I'm someone that likes to keep my lips feeling hydrated so that's why I prefer the glosses and everything like that. But this one is actually really comfortable. I did bring this with me to Japan and for one week straight I did wear this. It does last pretty long on your lips for it being a valid formula but definitely doesn't last you for like 12 hours you know what I mean it probably will last you a good six hours or so after a while you do need to take it off and reapply it I don't feel like my lips feel incredibly dry when you first apply it I mean towards the end of the day it does but for the most part I think it's a really good formula and for the lip products I feel like the pricing is decent I mean it is more expensive but I feel like for these kind of lip products it does kind of range in this price range for the velvet liquid lipstick my main I definitely like it and it's something that I'm going to keep in my top 
top drawer, I know I'm going to be wearing this lipstick a lot. So now I'm just going to insert a photo of these swatches that I found in my collection. I'm not going to try them on because I didn't feel like any of them were exactly a match. So I'll just leave the swatches of them over here so you guys can check it out. Next up, the lipstick that I bought is Hey Girl. I just think this one is a little bit too matte for me. It really just emphasizes the lines on my lips and it just makes them look a lot more drier. They also tug on my lips. I mean, you get that when you get matte lipsticks, but I just think I prefer ColourPop's Lux lipsticks over this one. Just personal preference. Nonetheless, it's a beautiful color. I think they are both great everyday kind of colors. So you definitely will get your wear out of them if you do purchase it. And for that, I think it is worth the money. So yeah, with that, that kind of wraps up my review. I just think it's really hard to recommend products when they are a little bit more pricey. So hopefully my review was helpful in deciding whether you guys wanted to buy any of these products or not because I know it is quite expensive. I know my conclusion of everything was kind of like it's up to you, but it is really up to you. I don't want you guys to take my recommendation and be like, Judy loves it, I'm gonna love it, because you might not. So just take it with a grain of salt, um, decide on on your own, apply it to yourself with what I said. If you guys pick up anything from this collection, be sure to let me know what you think. But yeah, with that being said, let's move on to the swatches and the three demos. Okay, so for the first demo, I'm going to start off with the shade Basic on my Makeup Collective number 16 brush. And I'm going to use the shade to set down my eye base, which is my concealer. And I'm just going to pat this all over my lid, from my lid space up to my brow bone, making sure everything is set down ready for the eyeshadow work. Next, I'm gonna go in with the shade Necessary on my ColourPop Tapered Blending Brush. And this shadow is going to be our transition shade. And I'm gonna put that straight into the crease using circular and windshield wiping motions. So the thing I notice about this transition shade is that you really want to use a little on your brush first because I feel like these kind of neutral brown they can look a little bit patchy, well just for me and what I've used. So you just want to go in with like a little bit and then slowly blend that out. Okay, and now I'm taking the shade Girl By on my Morphe M433. And this is going right in the outer corner of our lid. I'm going to first stamp on this color first using circular motions. And then I'm slowly going to start blending it up to the transition and to the inner part of my crease. So we're just going to be like deepening everything up and just going back in with my blending shade. And I'm just going to add that back in. Rocky! Okay, and now I'm taking the shade Chains on my ColourPop E9 brush. And I'm going to be doing exactly the same thing, but since I'm using a smaller brush, I'm going to focus this in a smaller section. So first I'm going to put that right in the outer corner first. And now I'm going to take the shade Try Me on my ColourPop Large Shader Brush, I believe it's what it's called. So I'm actually going to wet my brush and use the shade Wet and let's see how it goes. I'm only going to put this on the inner third of my lid space. And I'm just taking a little bit of Girl By once again on my Morphe M433 and just add it to that outer corner to bring back some of that red. I'm taking the shade Girl By on my Sigma E55 brush and I'm going to use this shade all over my lower lash line. Just smoking that out from outer to inner corner. And then I'll be using my Odyssey in Modestar eyeliner in the shade Coffee and I'm going to use this to tightline my bottom waterline. 
Okay, and now I'm going to be taking the shade Just a Kiss and I'm going to use this to highlight my brow bone and also my inner corners. I'm using this shade Wit so I can get it to a, like a metallic shine. Okay guys, so this is the final look for look number one. For the final lip pairing, I decided to go with the velvet lip in the shade in my main. I just thought the really warm nude lip would go well with like the reds in my eyes. For lashes, I am of course wearing the Bedore Lights from House of Lashes. And that is going to complete this very easy but grungy smoky eye. Okay, first I'm going to be taking the shade Necessary as my transition shade. This is going to be our transition shade for all our looks. And I'm first just going to pack that all over my lid first and then slowly blend it up towards my crease. But I'm using a very light amount of it and just slowly building this shade up. I feel like these kind of shades can look patchy sometimes. So I'm just taking my time with it making sure everything is nicely blended out because for look number two we're going to be creating such a dark look you want to make sure the base of it is nicely blended before you add any darkness i'm just taking a clean brush and i'm just going to go over the edges just to really diffuse everything because that is what is going to show through through the smoky eye and now I'm going to take the shade Churro on my Morphe M433 and I'm going to start patting this on my lid space, slowly blending that towards the transition. So just lightly stamping it on to my lid, keeping it close to my lash line and then slowly using windshield and circular motions to blend that towards the transition shadow. And as always, I'm just going back in with my previous brush and using Necessary just to build up that transition once again. So now I'm going to take my Inglot Gel Liner in the shade number 77 and I'm going to use my Colourpop Small Shader Brush. I'm going to use a little bit of this, put it on the back of my hand because it's super, super pigmented. And we're going to use this as a base for one of the shimmer shadows. So I'm going to focus this really close to my lash line by just patting it on. And then I'm just going to slowly bring that towards my crease when there's not much product left over. So I just want this mainly on my lid space and just let it gradually fade out. So the purpose of adding the black gel liner as a base is for the glitters to really pop up and really contrast against the black. If you were just to put it right on top of like the eyeshadow where it's not as dark, then definitely the glitters won't appear as like glittery and vibrant. And I'm just going to take the shade Cheens on my Sigma E25 blending brush. And I'm just going to use this shade just to blend out that black a little by just pressing where everything meets is gonna kind of diffuse that line just a little bit Okay, and now we're going to take the shade Game Over, which is the kind of dark black navy blue shimmer shadow. I'm going to use my Sigma E55 brush, and I'm actually going to use it wet. And we're going to apply this right on top of the gel liner. Okay, I'm just going to pack it on my eye first, and then I'll go in with my finger, and maybe we'll get the most shine out of it. So the reason why I'm using my Sigma E55 brush, the shape of this brush is a lot more rounded, and I want this shimmer shadow just to diffuse and be very soft I don't want to be cutting any creases or anything if I wanted to cut a crease I definitely would use like more of a detailed synthetic brush so as you can see around the edges I'm just patting it I'm not creating any creases I just want this to be like a really pretty 
glittery smoky eye. Okay, and I'm just gonna take a little bit of a moment and this shadow is very unique, but I'm gonna just use it on my ring finger and just dab it in the middle just to create more dimension. It's gonna bring out more of like the light blues and add more dark blue glitters to it. And it's such a pretty duochrome. So kind of just mixing game over and a moment together. Okay, now I'm gonna use the shade Churro on my Sigma E20 brush and I'm gonna smudge this all over my lower lash line. So I'm just connecting it on the outer edge with the shadow on top so that everything looks cohesive and just bringing that into the inner part of my lower lash line. Now I'm taking the shade Chained on my Makeup Collective and number seven brush and I'm gonna press this up against my bottom waterline and by swishing it like from side to side, it will blend out for you. And then just taking my Inglot Gel Liner once again on my Makeup Collective number two brush, I'm actually gonna use this in my bottom waterline to tight line. And that's also going on my top waterline as well. Okay guys, so this is the final look for look number two. For my lashes, I am wearing the Bedol Light from House of Lashes. And for my final lip pairing, I decided to go with the lipstick in Hey Girl. I just thought the pinkiness of the lip color would contrast nicely with the blues. I honestly love how this look turned out. I think the dark smokiness is just so classic and so sexy, you know? And it just makes my eyes pop and I just love it against my black hair. And so yeah, that is is the final look for look number two. Okay, first I'm gonna be taking the shade Necessary and this is going to be our transition shade once again. We're gonna be doing exactly the same thing as we've been doing in the past two demos, so nothing new here. Okay, now I'm gonna be taking the shade Churro on my Morphe M433 and I'm gonna start putting this all over my lid. It's very similar to the second look. We're just gonna stamp this all over our lid and slowly blend that towards up to the transition shade. Okay, now I'm just gonna take the shade Chains on my ColourPop E9 brush and I'm gonna start focusing this on the outer corner of my eye. Once again, just stamping that on and then once that pigment is there and there's not much product left on your brush, I'm gonna start blending a little bit more upwards into my crease and I'm gonna bring that in towards the middle of my lid. Taking my small pencil brush, this is the Makeup Collective number 10 brush. I'm gonna use this to get that right in the inner part of my lid space. Because of my eye shape, it's really hard to get into this little corner here with using like a bigger brush. So I'm just taking some concealer on the back of my hand using my Vanity Planet Small Cream Shadow Brush. I'm gonna start creating a cut crease and halo eye. Put this straight onto the center of my lid and then slowly bring that towards my crease. Now I'm just taking this very thin brush, it's like a paint brush, and I'm gonna use this to help me really sharpen up the cut crease. Next up, I'm going to take the shade Dirty Money on my Makeup Collective number 18 brush and I'm using this shade Wet. I'm going to put that right on top of the concealer and with this, you really want to tap the eyeshadow. That way all the gold like reflex will really show. I found that just swiping it on, you couldn't really see the gold too much but really tapping it onto the lid 
it will really bring out that glitter. And then I'm just gonna take a, just a kiss on my ring finger and dab that on top of Dirty Money, right on the center of my lid. This is gonna bring a little bit more dimension, bring out those gold and Dirty Money, and just make the center of the lid look a little bit more brighter. So now taking the shade Churro on my Sigma E55 brush, I'm just going to run this on my lower lash line from outer to inner corner. Again, just making sure we're connecting it with the shadow on top at the outer edge. That way the whole look can look a little bit more cohesive and not like two separate eye looks. And just using my Artisy In Modestar Eyeliner in the shade Coffee, I'm going to use this to tightline my bottom waterline. Okay guys, so this is the last look completed. For my lashes, I am once again wearing the Bedore Light. And for my final lip pairing, I decided to go with the liquid lipstick in my mane to finish off this look. I hope you guys like it. I really like how it turned out. Okay guys, this is going to wrap up my video for today. I hope you guys enjoyed everything and found it helpful in deciding if you wanted to buy anything from this collection. I love Desi and Katie both so much. I watch their videos, their stories, their steps religiously. But of course I wanted to be 100% honest with you guys. So with summer products, I cannot just 100% recommend to you. If you guys did enjoy this video and found it helpful, be sure to give this video a thumbs up for me. Also comment down below your thoughts on the looks, on the products, did you guys pick anything up? Are you going to pick anything up after this video? Be sure to let me know down below. And with that being said, that is it for today's video. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye!